welcome to Honeybuckle Homestead. We have a wood burning stove and my wife is going to be cooking uh, lunch today. She's going to be cooking it on the stove. It's going to be a soup in a big pot. So we're going to get the fire started. It's about 32 degrees outside. And so because the chimney outside is really, really cold and the flue inside the house is fairly long, we're going to pre-warm it. And the way I like to pre-warm it, it's pretty easy. I just use a little propane torch and uh, that's how I start. So first off, I'm going to uh, use the levers. I'm going to turn my thermostat all the way up to high. I'm going to open the flue, which now opens the back flue to let the flow through. I'm going to come across and I'm going to close off the oven. And then before I do anything, what I like to do is pre-warm the flue and get a little bit of warm air traveling that direction. You can do this numerous ways. You can do it with newspaper or whatever you want to do, but the smoke around, I like to do it with a propane torch because then there's no smoke. And at the same time, it creates a nice warm flue to get the drawer started. Otherwise, smoke comes into the house a lot. So I'm gonna try and keep it to a minimum. So right now, right where the flue is at the very back, as you can see down in there, there's a little square hole. I'm just going to light my propane torch. And I'm just going to hold my propane torch right in that hole. Just for a few minutes. Just pre-warming it. Do you know all that nice warm air? going up into the flue, drying it out just a hair because of the dampness, because of uh, the temperature outside, as I said, 32 degrees. So now we have done that. We're now going to place our logs. Now I always start with the big logs at the bottom. You can place them this way up, but then it traps all the airflow from the grate. And I want to get a nice airflow going through. So I like to put the radius down. When I put the radius down, they sit right in there. And of course, the radius allows the, the grate to uh, be able to get the airflow. And then we'll put another one in too, get that nicely situated on a nice position. I uh, I'm then going to get my little wood sticks I like to get numerous sizes, different configuration. We keep them in the little cubby hole here. Make it all easy so that we don't have to go out and freezing cold every time we light a fire. So here we go, just got a little bit of kindling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a crisscross manner. So I'm just going to build my fire and, and have a, a little crisscross manner across my logs just to start off with positioning those in in that little format the larger ones at the bottom notice the wood the big chunks of wood are at the bottom and the small pieces of wood are on top i'm going to take what they call a fat stick it's a little bit of pine it's got all the oils from the pine tree in it and i'm going to place that right in the center and then I'm going to put some more wood across the top of that and a crisscross manner also so that now I'm covering the stick getting prepared for my fire and I'm positioning it so I can still see the stick at the same time I know it's going to catch the wood on fire so right now first things first is just put a little bit of heat back up into the hole. This is so the airflow is going to start going up. I'm now going to light a little stick. As you can see, the fire stick lights nicely. And there's a little bit of smoke coming from the fire stick and I'm paying attention to the to the stick lighting getting everything going nicely 
and being able to adjust my wood accordingly so that I know that I'm going to get a nice flare up fire in a few minutes. Notice there's a little bit of smoke coming up. So once again, I just like to aim the torch. The black of the flu. Now it's directing the smoke in that direction. That means we don't fill the whole house with a whole bunch of smoke. If I was to close the door right now, I would have smoke coming out all over the front. And it would be really uh, a pain in the butt. So a little bit of warming up on the bottom of the logs again. A little bit of smoke coming out, as you can see. Shelfing it along. I'm sure that uh, plastic is staying well at least. going to a nice state. I'm going to see if I've got a good draw. So I just put my torch away. I leave my ash door slightly open. I now close the main door. So now as you can see we've got a nice fire going. The smoke is starting to build up in there so I'm paying attention because it's all about the smoke. We don't want to fill the whole house with a whole bunch of smoke. We have to open up the windows, turn the fans on. But as you can see, we, we're getting a nice fire going. There's minimum amount of smoke coming in because I pre-warmed the flue. So it's slowly traveling up the flue, going that direction with all the warm heat that I put in. So now I have my logs ready over here that are going to be drying out. I want them far enough away from the from the firebox, even though it's double wall. It gets nice and warm there, it doesn't get hot. It doesn't get hot to the touch until it's been burning for a while. As you can see, we have a nice fan. The fan comes on when the temperature gets to about 80 degrees on the top plate. We also have a little temperature gauge right here. And that also tells you the temperature of the stove. Makes it pretty safe, especially for people that are not used to wood burning stoves and how hot everything gets. As you can see, there's no smoke coming out into the house. Um, the glass is nice and clear. You can see the burn. It's traveling flame upwards and the smoke going through the flue. So as this uh, carries on, it burns through. Like I say, we have a little button here on the side. And this one, when you close it in, shuts off the airflow to the glass. When you pull it out like it is, it keeps the glass nice and clean. So there you have it. That's the start of the fire. And of course, now that I know that the flame is running good and the smoke is going up my flue, I'm just gonna give that a little bit of time and I make sure that my propane torch is out of the way. And notice that we've still got the, the box open at the bottom, We're letting it burn through. It takes a little while. You can't rush a wood burning fire. You just got to let it do its thing. I'll eventually be clo closing the ash door and that will cause more draft. And I'm making sure that my flue is still open and I'll be closing that. It takes about mm, anywhere between three to five minutes to start getting a nice burn. As you can see, it's just crackling away. And the fact that I don't have any smoke in the house is a, is a good goal for me. That's what it's all about for me. And so now we just need to wait a little bit. So, like I say, the wood that we're burning it's uh, white oak and we have some red oak and the piece that I put in the very bottom corner was a uh, fairly dark in color that was uh, black walnut 
So you want to uh, burn hardwoods in a wood burning stove. If you burn softwoods as pine or some of the poplar stuff, it gets, tends to burn up very quickly and it tends to smoke a lot. And you're constantly feeding the fire. Now, if I wanted to, I could open up the door just to check out everything's good. I don't need to, but I'm just going to show you how to open up a door if things don't go quite to plan. What you need to do is you need to open the door just very gently, just a crack. Let that open up. Notice there's no smoke. Then I gently open the door up and you can see my fire is burning nicely and all the hot air is going straight up my flue. So because it's proper and crackling, we don't want anything to get onto our carpets. I'm going to close the door down again. We're starting to get a nice burn. Notice that we have steel plates. We put our stove on a steel plate. It's eight and eighth inch thick. It's uh, just hot rolled, gives it that black color. And we also have uh, a heat shield on the very back. And that's a 16th thick. So it's really heavy duty. It's uh, very thick. And then you can see that I can put my hand behind it. That's because I have little tiny ceramic standoffs that I drilled holes through the steel plate with a ceramic standoff and screwed it into the stud. So there's actually about an inch of airspace on the back. So this is how I like to light the stove. So as you can see, we'll take another look at our flame, see where we're at. Make sure that uh, it's a nice strong fire. It's been a couple of minutes and I can see that the bottom logs are starting to catch just slightly. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to close my ash door. Now the ash door is closed, the draft is not so aggressive, but the flue is still open. We're gonna leave this for another three minutes. We're making sure that there's no smoke coming out and that the temperature is coming up. And in a few minutes, you'll notice that the fan will be spinning. And uh, we like to keep a kettle, uh, it's a stainless steel kettle, full of water. Uh, so that's constantly just simmering away, bubbling away. As the temperature gets up higher, it starts boiling. So then we may move it over to our less heat over this side, where the oven is, because we've still got our oven closed. So the fire's starting to burn nicely, starting to do its thing. Nice and clean, no smoke in the house. So now that I have it to this stage, I still have my thermostat on high, which means there's a little tiny trap door that is connected to this lever and it's just down in here. The little square hole with a flap. As I turn this this way, it closes the flap down. As I move it clockwise, it opens it up. So it's fully open right now. And like I say, the damper for the chimney and for the uh, flue is still open. So I'm noticing that the temperature is coming up. Started to lift up on the gauge and I can then just touch, it's touch warm. Over here, oh, it's warming up nicely, warming up nicely. So now it's a no touch situation because it's getting that hot. We want to be safe about this. There's little handrails and hand guards that enable you to stay safe so you don't get burnt. And I'm looking at the fire and the fire is burning nicely. Getting a good burn on the big logs as well as the kindling that's burning up. And I feel it's in a good spot. So that's been another three minutes. So now, next stage is to close the flue. So we just go to the lever, simple action, and we just push this down. This lever going down pushes a trap door in the flue area and shuts it off. 
the hole that I was now putting the propane torch heat into is now closed. And so it's utilizing this base trapdoor to get the draw into the fire. And as you can see, it's starting to burn more even, starting to draw down onto the bigger logs. And I'm quite happy with, with my fire. Seems to be going really well. And like I said, my wife is going to be cooking soup. I say she was going to be cooking morning breakfast. Uh, we would want the stove lit and the oven on so that we could do some frying and some cooking and maybe baking inside. So the lever on the side here gives you another thermostat. This is the oven and right now it's cold. The thermostat is way down close to zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow the heat to transfer from the oven side, or from the uh, stove, wood burning stove, over to the oven side, and that's this lever here. I then pull this lever out, that opens the trap door to allow the heat to transfer from the wood burning stove into the oven. And in a few minutes, you'll notice this gauge will come off zero and come up. Very simple, very clean, very effective. We just love our new wood burning stove and uh, we get in a lot of satisfaction from just seeing the open flame. We chose the, uh, the oven with the glass door. Yes, you've got to be careful with it. You don't want to be cracking it, breaking it. Uh, because we like to be able to see the flame visibly, we sit in the rocking chairs, uh, drink our coffee in the mornings. This morning we just got geared up, ready for a little filming. So there you have it. There's the wood burning stove on how to ignite one. I do it this way, it's my preference. I hope you enjoyed the video. If, you're, if you really have enjoyed it, uh, hey, hit the like button, maybe subscribe. Anyways, this is a new thing. I just wanted you to see the fan. So now the temperature has got up to 80 degrees. I can barely touch it. Super, super hot. And as you can see, the fan is operating all on its own. It's a, quite an incredible little fan. It has a aluminum magnesium base and it has a little tiny uh, electrical motor in the middle and there's some sort of strips inside that make contact from heat. So there's no electrical to it. All it is is it works off the fact that the base becomes very hot, makes the connection and the fan starts rotating. The fan won't start until it reaches about 80 degrees. Once the fire gets up to about 300 and the whole stove is probably at about 300, that little fan, boy, it just pumps the air out and heats the whole house. It's a wonderful little device. It was worth all its money. And so, hope you've enjoyed. Welcome to Honeybuggle Homestead. Here we have a nice fire. See the fire, it's burning. I've lowered the thermostat. And what I wanted to show you is the soup in the center of the stove, just simmering away. And the cool thing is, is the flue that we talked about is double walled and it's close to the whole wall. And people say to me, wow, that's really close. But as you can see, we are looking at 99 degrees, 100 degrees. If we look at the top, we are now getting to 116 degrees. As we go outside on the triple wall thimble, we're only looking at 72 degrees. So this is double wall pipe that's telescopic. So there's four layers of pipe Stainless steel on the inside, on the outside is galvanized painted black. Just makes it super, super safe that the temperature against the wall with the space, it's actually got about, mm, I want to say about a foot, maybe less. Just one bend going in. The triple thimble is what is needed to be safe and up to code going through the wall out to our outside chimney. So that's the flu.
telescopic 45 bend, 90 degree bend. You do not want more than one 90 degree bend in the house because the one that goes into the chimney is also 90 degrees. So a 45 and a 90 is the max you can do. Have a little look at the uh, Let's have a look at the chimney outside. So here we have our chimney. It's uh, 25 feet tall. Had to go above the crest line of the roof so that we get a good draw. And at the same time, we've got a little bird cage on the top so critters don't get in there and make nests. And uh, come over here, and you can see this is the uh, triple wall pipe I was talking about. See how big that thimble is? coming out of the house into the chimney going straight up and so we talked to the uh, person that made the chimney built it out of block and we talked about a clean out and normally he puts the clean out at the bottom and I said well that's difficult to get down there with the clean out brush and everything else so after talking to him I said can't we put it kind of eye level so I can see all the stuff coming down at the same time and stand back and just use the brush on a flexible rod. And he said, yeah. So instead of putting the clean out way down here, we filled this all with cement to make it nice and solid. And then put the clean out right here. And as you can see, if I open this up, you can see that's where our flue goes and I can get the brush in and do a clean out. At the same time, we've got hardly any smoke coming out, just a little whisper. So it's a nice fire, it's nice and hot. It's gonna heat up, as I said, it's pretty chilly. And uh, the warmer we get the fire, and the more burn that we get, the less smoke we get. Anyway, there's nothing like a nice smoke. Smoking myself a stogie. Anyways, say bye for now.